Hello everyone. The video you're about to see is bonus content for my dumbest arguments about the war in <laughs> video, the link to which is in the description. Oh, what's that? Why did I just censor the name of one of my videos? Well, recently I've noticed a pattern whereby whenever I release videos on a certain topic, they are automatically rated not suitable for advertisers and have to go through a lengthy review process during which they are not earning any ad revenue. As such, I figured I'd do this bonus video which talks about a common dumb argument about the topic of that other video, but done in such a way as to test YouTube's utterly broken rating system. But I'm going to replace the countries and key individuals involved with rough equivalents from Final Fantasy VIII, as one does. Okay, so basically this is about the war between the Galbaldian Empire and the smaller neighboring country of Dalit. Now, in case you're not familiar with Galbaldia, it has very destructive missiles. I think you understand what I'm referring to. So, the common dumb argument you hear from assorted pro-Galbaldian shills and grifters is that Balam Garden shouldn't support Dalit because it could lead to nuclear war between them and Galbaldia. Here's the part where you might expect some Final Fantasy fans to leave angry comments talking about how this analogy doesn't work because Balam Garden doesn't have missiles in the game, or how the missiles aren't nukes, etc. But you'd be wrong for two reasons. First of all, there's only one Final Fantasy VIII fan in the world. Me. Second, I said these were rough analogies, so bear with me. We're trying to stay advertiser friendly. Anyway, here's the problem with this argument. We know for sure that Balam Garden is not going to launch nukes at Galbaldia first. So if we're talking about escalation spiraling out of control and nuclear war breaking out, it naturally implies that Galbaldia will start it. And indeed, Galbaldian media has been gleefully talking about nuclear war with Balam Garden for years, well before the conflict ever started in, um, Dalit. One of their top TV hosts once enthusiastically ensured Galbaldian audiences that their country could easily reduce Balam Garden to, quote, radioactive ash. Wait, what? How did that get in there? That's not from Final Fantasy VIII. I'm sorry, that's some kind of mistake. I think it's a problem with the editing suite. But back on topic, even Galbaldia's president, Vinzer Delling, has repeatedly made threats of using nuclear weapons. He never shuts up about it, in fact. So, once again, this argument about helping Dalit defend itself leading to nuclear war is inherently implying that Galbaldia will initiate it. There's no way around this because Balam isn't going to strike first and we know Dalit doesn't have nukes. Are we up to speed? Good. Now, the follow-up in this fear-mongering about nuclear weapons is that nothing is more important than avoiding nuclear war. Therefore, we need to cut off aid to Dalit and force negotiation so as to end the war as soon as possible. Since Galbaldia is still occupying Dalit... D Dalitian? Dalitanese land, there's an implication that the latter should be willing to give up more territory to Galbaldia because nothing is worse than this hypothetical nuclear war that Galbaldia will definitely start should it lose. Now, you should be seeing the problem here already, but let's walk through it. So apparently, Vinzer Delling is such a madman that if he loses a conventional war in Dalit, he will launch a nuclear war, one which at best will lead to unpredictable, devastating consequences for his own country, and which at worst will lead to his country's total obliteration should other nuclear powers get involved and retaliate. We're led to believe that Delling is not even deterred by mutually assured destruction. There is no other accurate way to describe such a person than as a certifiable madman, a psychopath, utterly disconnected from reality. So what is the proposed solution to avoid this global catastrophe? We need to negotiate with the literal madman who will see the world burn rather than lose a conventional war against a neighbor. Yes, that's a rational actor who will definitely negotiate in good faith. You see why this is such an incredibly stupid argument? Vlada, uh, mm, sorry, uh, Vinzer Delling is well aware that launching tactical nukes will gain very little while opening up a Pandora's box, it can't be shut. He understands that one nuke fired at a NATO uh, garden ally will lead to the total destruction of Galbaldia, and he will rule over ashes. The Galbaldian elite loves having access to the um, uh, Balam Garden, Eshtar, whatever, just things from the game. Many of them still have children living abroad there. Plus, Delling can't just press the button. There's a long chain of command made up of guys who don't have a space in Delling's bunker. Moreover, anyone advancing this argument is basically saying that nuclear blackmail should be acceptable. Look at it this way. Right now, they're saying it's not worth risking nuclear war over Dalit. Fine. Say Balam Garden is in an alliance with Trabia Garden and Galbaldia invades it. 
Will these people change their position because they have a formal military alliance whose main principle is that an attack against one is an attack against all? Will they say, okay, Dalit was one thing, but Trabia is completely different because it's in the Garden Treaty Organization, GARTO. Of course not. They'll say that preventing nuclear war is far more important than upholding GARTO Article 5 and that it's not worth the risk just to save Trabia. Hell, what's to stop Delling from demanding the town of Balam and claiming there will be nuclear war if they meet any resistance? If preventing nuclear war is the be-all end-all, then you might as well hand Galbaldia anything it wants because it has nukes. Strangely, Galbaldian nukes are a deterrent to pretty much anything whereas the nuclear weapons of its opponents don't deter Galbaldia for some reason. Oh well, it must be that totally insane president they have. Whoops, I mean this guy. Yes, he's just so insane he'll launch a suicidal war just to save face, but let's sit down at the table and try to get a good, lasting peace deal out of this guy. Now I hope you understand why I left this argument out of the main video. It's just too stupid to take seriously since it has such a glaring internal contradiction. Lastly, whenever you hear someone banging on about this, Ask them what practical measures they're taking to deal with the threat of nuclear war. Are they building a bomb shelter? Clearly, some of these people who never shut up about it have the means to make a pretty kick-ass bunker if they wanted. Are they stocking up on iodine potions, elixirs, or phoenix downs? Are they drawing protect and shell spells? Okay, I got a little too into the Final Fantasy VIII analogy, but I think you get the point. The point being is that if some of these people, especially those with means, are so sincerely concerned about the threat of global nuclear war, we should expect them to be making at least some practical preparation for it. They could even show us as a way to prove how serious they are about their argument. But alas, they don't because they're full of shit. Anyway, I hope this was a fun mental exercise for you and maybe we'll learn something about YouTube's broken systems. And I appreciate your patience. Thanks for watching. I ask you again to please click like and subscribe and check the description below where you can find a link to my Patreon site to support my work when YouTube doesn't give me ads. Thanks again and catch you next time.